Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, time for another Metal Earth build, another one from the Halo series of models. I have the UNSC Gun Goose, a neat little all-terrain looking vehicle. Again, I'm kind of behind on the newer Halo uh, video games, but I kind of get the idea. And this one looks pretty neat, they always do. Let's open this up, see what's inside, and put it together. One more Halo UNSC. C gun goose. Oh, ATV looking thing. Let's open this up and see what we have. And it's stuck. Well, one sheet is stuck. It's probably been glued in. Slightly scrunched up, two metal sheets, and two sheets of instructions. Opening up the first one, as per usual, we have the newer style elongated page instructions. So starting out with page one, we have the usual Metal Earth 3D model kit. A 360 view and the address to get to it so you can look at that online a line drawing of the kit and the sheet and over here the usual section about insertion tabs insertion holes and fold lines needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly the older part of the legend when you see a blue circle in the assembly flow chart it means to insert the tab and bend it over the green triangle means to insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees and then we have the newer legend that they're including on most everything now. When you see an E pointing at something, it's pointing at the engraved side. And E is pointing at the non-engraved side. And that's not always perfectly clear at first. Usually that's more of a detailed side and non-detailed. Because sometimes the side that they're pointing at is non-engraved has engraving, but it's not supposed to be seen. And then attention points, trying to get your attention to make sure this slot goes in this tab or to point this this direction sometimes there'll be words explaining why you need to pay attention there and at the very bottom we have the two metal sheets or the layout of the two metal sheets see if I can't work this out real quick here we go and that way you have all the numbers pointing to all the parts and you can find them on the sheets plus they have several parts that are colored in the same color there's multiple different colors but any part that's colored the same is an identical part. For instance, these this big wheel is 29, 29 points of that. So all of these purple ones are 29. They're wheels, they're four of the same. They'll get used in four different places. Same kind of thing with the other parts. Same number, one of them's numbered. All the parts of that color are the same number. And if we slide over to page two, to the start of the assembly flow chart, and we just start with part one, which is here. Part two, circle that and put it here. Part three, fold it like that, put it here. Then go to this side, there's part four. Curve it around, add it here, and this is what you'll end up with. And then down here, and you just follow along, adding the parts and folding things as it says to do so, till you get to the bottom. And then we flip to the other side, to page three. And we continue following the arrows, assembling the parts. Page four, continue until the bottom. And then we continue on to the next sheet. Open that up to probably the inside. There we go. Page five, continue on. Then to page six over here, continue on. And then flip to page seven, continue page 8 and once you get to the bottom you are finished with your model. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers, I have flat nose pliers, I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, 
a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. Also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits, and I use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Another option for rounding parts, especially larger parts, is sockets. Maybe you have some sitting around already, maybe you know someone that will loan you a few, or maybe just pick up a really cheap set. We've opened it up, peeked at the instructions, got the metal sheets here, I've got some basic tools to get me started. Let's put this together. I wrapped part 4 the wrong way according to the directions and put the engraved side out. I didn't want to undo it and start over so I decided to leave it and make sure I did the same thing for the other side. I am bending the tabs in slightly because they are flared out. Bending them in so that they are both pointing straight to the next connection makes the tabs line up easier with our slots. Part 9 is one of the few complexly bent items in this model. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will take shape as you add on pieces. By the way, I did bend mine the wrong way at first. The slots here did not want to go over their tabs and I did not want to struggle with it, so I clipped the tabs a little bit so things would go into place. I may have, however, clipped them a bit too much, but it held together.
I didn't even try to twist these tabs. I worked to bend them over instead. One of the tabs was pushed in by accident. I decided to just continue pushing it over.
The tabs on these parts are so close to the signs of other parts that I could not effectively use my standard tweezers. And of course, something had to break off. No worries though, there are more slots and tabs on that part. I can make it work. It takes trial and error to figure out how far in to bend the tabs. The wheels had me a little worried, especially attaching the second half to the first. All the flaps were easy to manipulate into place, so it was no big deal.
In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality, I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. I am putting on the section that broke off earlier. 
It has two tabs attaching it to the frame and even more tabs on the sides that will help hold it together. I will build those pieces next. Having completed the first two wheels, I now know not to waste a lot of time making sure the flaps on the wheels are bent down perfectly before attaching the two halves. I am bending the twisted tabs inward so they do not get in the way of parts 39 and 50 fitting properly.
Ladies and gentlemen, the UNSC Gun Goose finished and complete. This was a fun build. I did not find it extremely challenging. I found it challenging enough, but not ridiculous. I enjoyed putting it together, and I ended up with a really neat gun toting ATV vehicle. This build took about three and a half hours, which is about how long it felt. I spent a lot of time just working on the wheels, but the wheels weren't that complicated. They actually came together easier than, than I expected they would. When that long piece in the back broke off, that was frustrating, but fortunately for me there were enough tabs that I can still put it in place, and you really can't tell that that had one point broken off. It came together rather nicely. It was a fun build. Comparing it to the Warthog, this one was a lot easier to do, mainly because that Warthog had that really frustrating axle set up, and this was very straightforward and easy to do. If you're into Halo models, then put this guy together. It's just challenging enough. It's not frustrating or overly difficult. It's not the easiest model to start with. It's a good mid-range, but do this before you do the tank, because that tank, oh my. If you're into gun-toting ATVs, yeah, sure, why not put this together? That's kind of, kind of wild looking right there. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.